Hello there, Commonwealth from. The Legend of Zelda has now 20 mainline games, and based on all indications and interviews with producer Eiji Anuma and director Hidemara Fujibayashi, this is it for the Era of the Wild and Tears Hyrule. There will be no DLC. So what now? Or more precisely, where are we heading? Well that is what we want to get in depth into with this video. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press notification bell for more Zelda as we're going for 2024 likes. The development of Breath of the Wild started over 10 years ago, before the first tease and announcement in January 2013 and reveal in June 2014. Since then, the 3D Zelda team has been working on the same map, and within this one, locations and characters. It is really time to move on, but where, and more importantly, with or without this Link in Zelda now that the true threat of Ganondorf and its demon forms have been vanquished. Something completely different from Hyrule of this time is definitely needed. With the implications at the end of Tears of the Kingdom, it will be difficult to separate Zelink. You can't just send Link on a mission like in Majora's Mask or Link's Awakening. No, they have to travel together and then be separated if they are to return. There is probably this question that is also something that Eiji Anuma and Hidemaru Fujibayashi have had to address when they determined to continue the non-linear open-air formula. One that we have covered since 2014, and throughout that time, we gained a channel mascot which has been a part of our interests and banners including with Link since 2017. But now with my brother, I have founded Figimi which is our new figurine business, and we are starting with none other than the channel mascot. The winged hussar that kind of depicts me, <laughs> but which has been with us since pretty much the launch of Breath of the Wild, and is now available on figgyme.com. It's a great way of supporting us, uh, and also to make sure that uh, we can produce more of these, which are highly detailed figurines with proper proportions as well, giving freedom to creators that we will be working with in the future. So be sure to check out figurine.com and get your figurine today. And now since we're talking about characters... The probability of playing as this Link again in a The Legend of Zelda game and not just Hyrule Warriors, Mario Kart or Smash is definitely there, but it isn't the only option. Still, I think before we potentially return to the Hero of Three Layers, I see it more likely that we will go back to the original form of Zelda for the 21st game top-down and for no less than the 40th anniversary of the first Zelda on the Famicom Disk System, the year later for the NES. The first Zelda in 4K on Nintendo's next-gen system and with the same level of creativity and ambition as seen for Super Mario Bros. Wonder for 2D Mario. After all, top-down is Zelda's 2D and was even used to sketch out many Breath of the Wild's ideas. On the Switch, we also had the Link's Awakening HD remake, which we all fell in love with, including for its side-scroller sections with Mario enemies, no less. Endless possibilities in Hyrule or a new land with a new type of gameplay, combining the best of Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Tears of the Kingdom, along with fusing the size and scale of the two. Ambitious, yes, but not overstretched. A new standard for 2D Zelda, with voiced cutscenes, bigger scale, and stakes than just Pig Ganon but also preserving traditional Zelda, which 3D Zelda has departed from as confirmed in interviews with the Zelda team. As for the main foe, a return of Varty could be an option, but a new well-crafted villain would be even better, all in a game that will probably remain Nintendo's secret until the anniversary year. Revealed in the month the anniversary begins, so February and release for the holidays, though it might have been moved earlier to, say, October due to Pokemon's 30th anniversary in 2026, and they will demand November for their Gen 10 or X unless that one comes out in 2025, three years after Scarlet and Violet. But yes, a shorter reveal to release cycle is likely in this case, as top-down Zelda games are usually revealed months, not years, prior to release. Could this be the case with the next open-air Zelda game as well? Most likely, not, since 3D Zelda has always had a hype cycle, which makes these releases as anticipated as the Olympics. Funny enough, we have the Olympics far more often than new Zelda releases these days. But jokes aside, I see the Zelda team taking their time to think about what would be an even more fun land to discover, explore and do the impossible in comparison to this Hyrule. With this link right here, we naturally need to leave Hyrule. Going to Yona's domain and homeland might be an option. 
Though that scenario is more fitting if we by some miracle get a Tears of the Kingdom Deluxe in the first year of Nintendo's new system. Link should end up in a land which offers something we couldn't explore in these two games. A proper city, rewarding urban Zelda fans like myself after waiting over 20 years since Twilight Princess Castle Town. Especially after the Zelda team added a jump button and climbing ability plus freefall in this Hyrule. Zelda Assassin's Creed. And much like Assassin's Creed, it could take inspiration from a number of historical eras. Medieval like in Ocarina, early Renaissance like in Twilight Princess, or even Baroque and many others. It could even be modern, perhaps cyberpunk, but that wouldn't work so well for Zelda. Personally, I would rather have none of this, but one of two drastically different styles. Feudal wooden Japanese or stone marble Greco-Roman. It is clear that with these two games, the Legend of Zelda team took a lot of inspiration from polytheistic Japan and pre-Christian polytheistic Europe. The Kakariko Shika and Yiga, Hyrule's king shared a name not only to the original, but also the location of Rome, the Colosseum, the ancient Hylian ruins being literal Roman columns, and so on. In both Breath and Tears, we got the Japanese village with Kakariko, but nothing to the scale of the castle town that was burned in front of our eyes long before we left the Great Plateau. Similarly, the Roman locations were ruins like in real life in the former territory of the Empire. I'm just saying I would love to see the Zelda team taking on this urban challenge of scale after doing it for everything surrounding the middle point of the map. Lookout Landing was cute, but not really a seat of power. Alternatively, they could take a route they haven't done since the first decade of the 2000s, the island jumping sailing adventure. In October 2023, concepts of a Zelda pirate adventure titled Voyage of the Goddess were posted to TikTok by user Ben G, a sailing adventure like The Wind Waker, but more ambitious and with actual privateer slash pirate combat and lore. Set along Hyrule's coast, but with more islands, caves, playing as Zelda, and naturally with underwater gameplay and even a castle and dungeon. The latter two, which weren't present in The Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, nor Tears of the Kingdom. A next level 4K sailing adventure in contrast to The Wind Waker and its HD Wii U version, reusing parts of the map, but only its eastern coast which we thought would be more utilised, but in the end had no dungeons, as the temple ended up in the sky. At least there is a future for temples and dungeons in 3D Zelda after Tears of the Kingdom. Even so, it is uncertain whether we will see more of a focused return to the beloved pre-breath formula or a continuation of the Divine Beasts and traditional blend delivered by Tears of the Kingdom. All I know is that I want an underwater temple again, and I want it to be good. Just like underwater gameplay and combat for the best pirate game since Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Anyway, that is the Wind Waker Evolved and with two water levels for roots. Now, let's get into a different one presented by Benji. Nordic Vikings. And as you may know, I am Norwegian. Well, half. And a Viking Zelda game easily could combine land and sea as Vikings had their homeland in the north, but love to explore the seas even more. Well, Valhalla could be a better Viking game than Assassin's Creed Valhalla. With dragon-shaped architecture, bearded and long-haired braided axe-wielding warriors, minus Link and Zelda, natural. Yes, that weapon is the symbol of Norway, and of the Varangians, who served the Roman emperors of the East. So here's my idea which combines a lot of options we have already explored. A blend of sea and continent. Think half being land-like in Breath of the Wilds and Tears of the Kingdom's Hyrule, and the other half sea exploration. Combining the land power of ancient Rome with the naval masters of Greece in truth, continuing the thread established in these two games, plus Skyward Sword, set by director and writer Hidemara Fujibayashi, but this time, properly set in this beloved and lengthy time period. A very different, but at the same time greatly unique take on the ancient world, which had its palaces, squares, temples, cities, monuments ranging from statues to pyramids, magnificent harbors, and naturally, rich mythology and iconic weaponry and armor, plus lots of nature outside the walls. Pretty much perfect for the next open air Zelda. I don't dare to do titles, as you never guessed them, but it will definitely not be Origins and Odyssey, as those have already been claimed by Assassin's Creed. Anyway, the potential for such a title is immense, and the architecture will be breath and Tears of the Kingdom's splendor of Zora's domain, but in far more locations. As the ancient world was monumental, but also colorful, 
and if the Zelda team decides to explore this time of early democracy and the Empire, then we will get a true masterpiece again. Naturally, the Roman Empire isn't the only imperial source of inspiration, since Rome fell while the equally old Empire of Japan is still here with the same dynasty, serving likely as the divine inspiration for the Zeldas. So an entire Zelda game set in feudal Japan, including with its castles and pagodas, before the first Assassin's Creed game in the same setting would be quite something. After all, Hidemaro Fujibayashi and the Zelda team placed Link exploring his favourite castle and my favourite in Japan, Himeji, plus skydiving down to Kyoto. Naturally, this was early playtesting, but there could be something more to it. Hence, we let AI have a go at it, and the results did not disappoint. Kakariko and the Yika hideout was just a taste. The real historic imperial, or perhaps shogunate Japan, still awaits. Pagodas, temples and shrines, markets, food and cooking traditions, and so much more. Compounded with equally stunning scenery as in this Hyrule. It speaks for itself that a game like this with a samurai and ninja theme as a major part of the main quest and story will be on a whole different level and more fitting to the roots of this franchise, Kyoto Prefecture, Japan. No doubt all the game scenarios we have presented taking inspiration from our own world will take 5-6 to six years to develop from scratch, and most likely they will involve a new Link as, let's be honest, the Link have suffered enough and deserve to be happy in the ending they got in Tears of the Kingdom. Unless Link is called back up to the sky which hides far more above than we got to play through in Tears of the Kingdom, delivering the sky adventure and civilization we all thought we would get in this game, but hey who knows. What matters to us is that the Zelda team now has much more powerful tools to work with thanks to Nvidia's new chip and horsepower. A Zelda that doesn't have to hold back in both its art style, scale and gameplay. Yes, we might return back to Twilight Princess realism again as DLSS upscaling and performance boosting might make this option viable. Though, seeing how creative this development house is, I think that they will want to deliver something truly unique in 2028 or 2029 away from Hyrule and address the last shortcomings, so underwater gameplay, enemy and boss variety, and perhaps being fully voice acted beyond cutscenes. A game that is not inferior to other games in any ways, including when it comes to the use of voice acting. Now that they have tested the waters, it is time to submerge underneath and unleash the next big leap after jumping, climbing and paragraphing. Sheikah Slate runes and Zona vehicle and weaponry magic. A game that will appeal to everyone willing to explore and discover the unknown in front of us, theorize over the lore and mysteries presented to us. A Zelda that takes full advantage of the new hardware, demonstrating loud and clear to any Nintendo studio and third party developers how it is done and why you should continue to bring your games to this ultimate hype, or by convincing any adapters and late adapters to go Nintendo upscaled 4K before the end of this decade. That is, if a new top-down Zelda in 4K for Zelda's 40th anniversary hasn't already done that in 2026, or a potential Tears of the Kingdom Deluxe version to kick off the new system far sooner than that. We haven't even touched on remakes and remasters, but we should since we got two of them on the Nintendo Switch just like on the 3DS and Wii U before it. Right here is our rather obvious clue that there will be at least one during this new generation. I'm just saying. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess 4K and perhaps a top-down remake, Minish Cap or the Oracles in 4K. Either way, I don't want to make this video more bloated and instead want to hear your next Zelda game ideas in the comments. Though before that, be sure to share this video, leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell to make this video more visible and for you to not miss any of our future Tears of the Kingdom and Zelda videos. Last but not least, a big thanks to all of you for watching until the end and to all our patreon.com slash common patrons. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.